Welcome back to Power Play. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau continues to face calls for a secret ballot vote on his leadership. Sources tell CTV News he did not acknowledge those calls during this week's caucus, and instead the Liberal Party's new campaign director came to talk to MPs in detail what a plan for the party might look like between now and when an election happens. Part of that presentation included ads the party finally plans to roll out. They've spent a fraction of what the Tories have on advertising this year. Here's what the newest ad looks like. When it comes to strengthening our public health care system, the Liberal team is fighting for you. After they secured vaccines to protect Canadians from COVID-19, they made investments to hire more family doctors and reduce wait lists. Now they're rolling out dental care and they're getting Pharmacare done to deliver free contraceptives and diabetes medications. Pierre Poilievre has made it clear that he would make cuts to all these investments, removing health care services from millions of Canadians. Canadians need progress, not cuts. We won't go back. Now, that ad comes as Elections Canada has released updated fundraising numbers for the third quarter of this year, which shows the Conservatives have maintained their sizable lead in totality or in the aggregate. In the first nine months of the year, the Tories raised $29 million. The Liberals brought in just over $10 million, and the New Democrats raised almost $4 million. So will new ads like the one you just saw help change the conversation surrounding the Prime Minister and his leadership? And what do those new fundraising numbers tell us? Let's bring in the front bench. Former BC Premier Kirsty Clark is here. She's a senior advisor with Bennett Jones. Former Alberta MLA and Cabinet Minister Gary Marr is with us. He's the president and CEO of the Canada West Foundation. And CTV's Mike Lucatour rounds us out for this round. Tom Mulcair is joining us, but we're having a bit of scheduling issues. So he's going to be here for the, for the next conversation, we hope, on, on immigration. Uh, Gary, I'll start with you. We have been talking for a long time about no ads from the Liberals, uh, you know, them talking about defining their competition in, in Pierre Polyev, but, but not actually doing so. What did you think of, of what they have started to lay out? Well, let me say, first of all, I mean, health care is an odd one for the Liberal government uh, to start with, the Liberal Party to start with. I, I think if you were to ask uh, the millions of Canadians that don't have a primary care physician and uh, you ask the people who are waiting in long lists uh, for surgeries or procedures, uh, they would say, geez, you know, I'm not sure that the health care system is better than it was nine years ago when the Liberal Party came uh, into government. So it, it strikes me as being an odd one to launch with, and, and I'm not sure it's going to be successful. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, with respect to the ad, um, you know, they're going to start buying more ads, but um, they don't have the kind of firepower in terms of money. Money buys ads. And Canadians seem to be voting with their dollars at this point, if that's a proxy for uh, how they're going to vote in the next general election, the next defining moment of the history of Canada. Um, I think that it's notable that the Conservatives have held a strong lead on fundraising, not just this year. This is a, a record year for fundraising for them in a non-election year. And it's twice as much as the other two parties combined. Um, and so I, I think that, um, you know, maybe it's a little too a little, too little, a little too late. And uh, it's maybe not just coincidental that this ad would come out shortly after the period of time that uh, the, uh, the leader of the Liberal Party is struggling with uh, maintaining the, uh, the unity of his caucus. And so he's saying... Nothing to see here. Let's go on to the next thing. And this is the next thing. Well, I certainly think, I mean, they haven't even been uh, sort of covert about that, Christy. Like, they, they have talked about how they want to turn the page now and focus on, on the upcoming uh, election. The question of timing, Gary raises, is, is an interesting one, and one I've certainly been thinking about as they talk about these ads and now that this ad has come out. I think the Conservatives last year spent $9 million on ads to the 300000 that the, the Liberals did. Do in, do in your view, or does in your view, the ads like this matter? Do, do they have an impact? And is the timing of them, uh, you know, the idea of leaving it to a campaign or bringing it in advance, like, does that matter from your perspective? It does matter. Part of it is that political parties have can spend way more outside of a of a writ than they can inside of a writ so it can give mm -hmm. the rich parties a huge advantage um, in the, in the process but i mean i think just kind of back to the timing what we what we really are seeing i mean is 
Justin Trudeau has been meeting with the caucus. They've been telling him, you've got to get out there and tell the story. You've got to get out there and start talking about things that people care about. And we've got to just stop talking about ourselves publicly and all the rest of that. Well, that's actually what they're doing now. They're finally putting out some ads that are critical of the Conservatives. And I would disagree with Gary on this one point. I think, I mean, I, I do think that we should all be talking about the economy. We should be talking about economic growth and jobs, cost of living, all those things. But from a purely political perspective, there is no doubt their polling is going to show that the Conservatives are extremely weak on health care. Canadians are very concerned with that issue in every election. And so I'm not surprised that they came out with that first. They want to go to where the Conservatives are softest in the minds of Canadians. But I mean, in terms of the timing, I think it makes a lot of sense. And it, you know, if, if, we don't know what happened in those meetings, but if it was the Prime Minister saying to his caucus, okay, okay, I've heard you, we are going to start getting out there and talking about the Conservatives instead of our own internal problems, and we're going to hit them where it hurts, if that's what he told them in response to the questions they had for him, they are now delivering on that, and that's, I think, what you're seeing. Yeah, I think uh, there's sort of two ways to look at it, and both Christy and, and Gary outlined this, Mike. On the one hand, I don't think Canadians, I certainly can't find a public opinion poll that shows Canadians think health care access in this country is great right now. So it right. is a bit in that vein, and, and certainly that was the line of questioning to the Minister of Health, strange. At the same time, I think Christy does have a point. I think what the Liberals are trying to do here is use an issue that they feel there is a clear contrast with the Conservatives on and amplify that issue to the to the best of their ability, which I should say, by the way, this is only an online ad at this point. Yeah, and I think it's, it's one of those games where you say, Pick a lane where you know you can maybe speed up in and where you can beat your opponent and make sure that you know that you have something there that you can win with. I think also interesting in this ad is where was Prime Minister Justin Trudeau in this ad? I Funny mean, that you asked. There's just a few shots of him kind of in the yeah. background. Can you pause for a second? Because yeah. we've got Mark Miller, the immigration minister. He was asked about the sort of lack of Trudeau in this ad. Have a listen to what he said. Justin Trudeau is not named in it. Are, are you guys ashamed of your prime minister? Absolutely not. That's a ridiculous question. So why, why isn't he, like... I'm not in it. <laughs> sure, but you're not the prime minister. <laughs> Ridiculous question, Mike. I don't <laughs> yeah. know. Is it that ridiculous? I don't think it is. I mean, is he obviously he's no longer the the person that they want to highlight uh, with the party. That is something that's very clear. I mean, you have a number of MPs who are saying, "Hey, I don't think that he's the guy to lead." So you see him a couple of times, but certainly it says it's the Liberal Party. It's not the Trudeau Liberals anymore. But the fact that he's not front and center is really a good indication of where they're going here and what they know their strengths are, what they know their their weaknesses are one of them is the prime minister and I think the number is very much tied to the lack of ad buying and I know that you can't really buy ads if you don't have the money but also I think you look at voters and maybe liberals that are sitting back and not donating because they're sitting back and looking at the party and saying well who are we supporting right now you have had a near mutiny in the part in the party. So why would anybody anybody be donating? And if they're not seeing ads either, then it's not top of mind for them. Okay, Tom Mulcair is here. I think we have reached him, which is very <laughs> exciting. So I'll I'll throw the last comment to him. Uh, uh, Mike called it a near mutiny. There's certainly you know two dozen MPs who asked the prime minister to step aside. Do you think it's done and over now? I do. I, I don't think that this ad buy is going to change anything, although it is welcome, certainly, by backbench members of the, of the Liberal caucus. I, I think, Bashi, to put it simply, it's too little too late. Uh, Mr. Trudeau has actually given a plausible explanation why he held back from going after Poitiers. Didn't think it was the time. They were coming out of the pandemic and so forth. But whatever the reasons for that bad decision, it's his bad decision. And now they're well over 20 points behind in the polls. And I don't think that anything that we've seen in this ad buy is going to change that radically. They're, they're looking for any positive sign. So if there's even the slightest bump or change in the polls, they'll try to point to that and say, you see, we were right. This is all that it's going to take. But actually, that's not all that it's going to take. People are just you know, tired of Mr. Trudeau, I think. And that's what Mr. Trudeau is going to have to realize on his own. Uh, Christy, Actually, jump I, I've got like 15 seconds. Yeah, I was the national youth campaign director for Mr. Kretchen in, in <laughs> 1993. And I remember he was incredibly unpopular. And we were talking about how to get all of the other people in the ads other than him. And he won one of the biggest majorities in, in Canadian history. So, you know, you can say, yeah, there maybe he's not in the ads. But there have been lots of examples of leaders who win after their parties don't put them in the ads.